All right, buckle up, because today we're diving deep into something you might not expect, leadership training. Mm -hmm. But not just any leadership training. Yeah. We're heading back to 2003 at the Norfolk Naval Shipyard. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. These are the folks responsible for getting warships, you know, ready for combat. The pressure is definitely on. Yeah, no pressure at all. We've got this incredible report, and honestly, it's like getting a behind-the-scenes look at how they totally revamped their leadership development program. And they needed it, right? Like, this wasn't just a little refresh. They were starting from scratch. Exactly. And one of the things that really struck me was how they realized their old system was actually creating the wrong kind of leaders. Which is uh, not ideal, to say the least, especially when you're talking about something as critical as a shipyard. All right, so you got the shipyard commander. They realize there's a problem. Where do they even begin to fix something like that? Well, they use this system called curriculum architecture design. It's oh. kind of like, uh, imagine architectural blueprints, but for building a leadership program. Oh, interesting. So instead of just like throwing together a bunch of random workshops, they were taking a really strategic approach. Yeah, they brought in everybody, top performers, subject matter experts, really got everyone's perspective. And one thing I really appreciated was that they weren't afraid to just scrap what wasn't working. Oh, yeah. The report actually mentions over 150 courses that they reviewed. Wow, 150. Yep. Some they kept as is, some they completely reworked, and others they basically just tossed out. Ruthless efficiency. I love it. Exactly. They knew what they wanted to accomplish. Okay, so they have the plan. They're not afraid to make tough decisions. But how did they actually define what good leadership even looked like in this environment? That's where the performance model comes in. They identified nine key areas of performance, basically the essential ingredients of a successful shipyard leader. Okay, so like, give me an example. What's one of those essential ingredients? Well, one that stood out to me was stakeholder relationship management, which in a shipyard means being able to work effectively with everyone from Navy officials to engineers to the people on the shop floor. Makes sense, right? Yeah. You've got these incredibly complex projects, tight deadlines, and yeah, people's lives are on the line. Relationships are key. Absolutely. And they didn't just say be good at relationships. They actually identified the typical performance gaps, the common mistakes that even experienced leaders were making. Oh, that's juicy. So they're like reverse engineering success, but also pinpointing those pitfalls to avoid. So what were some of those pitfalls? Spill it. So one of the big ones was giving feedback, you know, like clear, actionable feedback that actually helps people improve. They found that a lot of leaders weren't doing that effectively. Oh, interesting. Because I was going to say, like, we've all been there, right? Getting that vague feedback that just leaves you more confused than before. Exactly. And in a high stakes environment like a shipyard, that kind of feedback can have a huge ripple effect. Absolutely. So what did they find? Was it just that these leaders were bad at communication? Or was there more to it than that? It was actually way more nuanced than that. They found that a lot of times the problem wasn't the individual leader's skills, it was the system. Like they weren't being given the right tools or the support to give good feedback. Oh, wow. Okay, so it was like a systemic issue, not just a personal failing. Exactly. And that's a really important takeaway for any organization, right? Leadership development isn't just about training individuals, it's about creating a culture that supports those skills. Yeah, you can't just tell someone be a better communicator mm. and expect them to magically transform overnight. It takes structure. It takes support. Right. And this is where their whole ruthless efficiency thing comes back in. Remember all those training courses they reviewed? Well, they didn't just look at the content. They specifically looked at how well each course addressed those performance gaps. So it was like, does this course help leaders give better feedback? No. Okay, next. Pretty much. And if a course had potential but wasn't quite there yet, they marked it as use as source, meaning they'd pull out any valuable parts and integrate them into the new stuff. Talk about making the most of your resources. I kind of love it. Yeah, they were very strategic. And this actually leads into another cool thing they did. Modularity. Instead of having these huge one-size-fits-all training programs, they broke everything down into smaller reusable components. Oh, interesting like building blocks of leadership skills. Exactly. They called it the T&D module inventory framework. Each module focused on a specific skill or area of knowledge, and they could mix and match them to create custom learning paths for different people. That's really smart. That way everyone's getting the specific training they need without wasting time on stuff they already know. Right. And it also makes it easier to update the training over time. 
If they identified a new performance gap, they could just create a module for it instead of redoing the whole thing. It's like they were building the future of leadership development back in 2003. Okay, so we've got the performance model, the ruthlessly curated training inventory, this brilliant modular approach. What did they do with all of it? Did they actually implement these changes? They were definitely moving into the implementation phase mm -hmm. as the report was being written. And one thing they emphasized was measuring return on investment, the ROI. Which makes sense, especially when you're talking about government funding, right? You want to prove that your training is actually making a difference. Exactly. And they were talking about tangible results, too, like increased productivity, faster project completion times, fewer safety incidents. So, like, real-world impact, not just some vague idea of improvement. Okay, so how were they planning to actually measure all of that? They mentioned that they were developing a system for tracking key performance indicators, both at the individual and organizational level. Interesting. So they had the foresight to think about that even back then. Oh, absolutely. They understood that if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And that's true for leadership development, just like anything else. 100%. And it's even more impressive considering they didn't have all the fancy data analytics tools we have today. Yeah. They were really relying on their own observations and a deep understanding of how the shipyard worked. Right. It just goes to show you sometimes the simplest approach is the best one. You know, it's funny how we always talk about leadership as if it's this big, mysterious thing. Right. But this report, it really breaks it down. They're not interested in some, you know, idealized image of a perfect leader. Yeah, they skip right past that. They're all about the practical stuff. What do leaders actually do every single day? And uh, where they usually mess up. And where they mess up, that's the good stuff. Right. And it's refreshing. You know, uh. they're not pretending that leadership is something you're born with. Oh, no, definitely not. Like some kind of magical quality. They're saying, hey, it's a skill. You can learn it. You can get better at it. You can measure it. Exactly. You can measure it. And that reminds me, they were working on that system to track key performance indicators. Right, right. Trying to bring some data to the table. Can you imagine what they would have done with all the data we have now? It's mind-blowing. They would have gone nuts in a good way. Totally. Like performance reviews, project data, heck, even just the emails people yeah. send. They were ahead of their time in a way. They knew that if you're serious about improving something, you got to measure it. Totally. And it makes their work even more impressive when you realize they didn't have all the fancy tools we have today. It was old school, boots on the ground kind of stuff. Exactly. They were out there observing, talking to people, mm -hmm. really understanding how the shipyard worked. They asked good questions and listened. Which, you know, it seems obvious. It does. <laughs> but a lot of times we skip that part. We think we already have the answers. That's so true. We could all use a little more of that, I think, really listening and observing before we jump to solutions. 100%. And this whole report, it feels like that, you know, like an act of deep listening. I like that. They were listening to what the organization needed, listening to the people who were already successful. And probably even listening to their own, like, hopes for what leadership could be. Yeah, that too. And they took all of that and they turned it into this blueprint. For leadership development, that still makes sense today. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it's not about some fancy title or, you know, bossing people around. Yep. It's about understanding the context, knowing what you need to be good at, and yeah. actually getting results. Measurable results. Exactly. Yeah. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I hope everyone listening is, you know, feeling inspired. Hmm. Because the Norfolk Naval Shipyard they showed us that leadership development doesn't have to be this vague, fluffy thing. It can be strategic, it can be data-driven, and it can have a real impact on an organization. Mm -hmm. So whether you're leading a team, designing training programs, or just trying to be a better leader in your own life, remember those lessons. Don't settle for training that just checks the boxes. Demand more. Demand better. Demand training that actually transforms. Couldn't have said it better myself. All right, on that note, until next time.